Uh, kia ora tato, um, and it's great to be back again at, at a Sustainable Seas Conference. Um, what, I, what I want to talk to you to, today about is to introduce uh, uh, one, one dimension of the uh, Cultivating uh, Value in the Blue Economy project. And really it's, to think it, it's, it's some work that we've done thinking about transitioning uh, towards a blue economy. Now the, uh, uh, the research team um, is up there in front of you and that this talk draws um, in part from a series of interviews that we've done uh, over the last year or so and uh, several student projects that have been uh, largely web-based and looking at uh, media reports and so forth. This is not going to work for me, Judy, is it? Uh, okay, um, what I wanted to start with really, uh, you, you see a, a, the, a book title there, this is not just shameless uh, promotion of a book that we've just published, it's, it's really where maybe we, but it is, um, it might be where we want to take, uh, uh, take some of this work about, about the blue economy into the public sphere. So really what, what we're trying to think about is remaking New Zealand's economies um, and in, in this particular um, venue, New Zealand's blue economy. And really what we, what we found is that thinking about transitions, thinking about how you go from one state to another, um, the kinds of experimental activities and practices necessarily, uh, necessary to generate change is one way to begin to think about this. Um, and so today, really, uh, what I'm going to put up is a series of um, examples of how firms and, and communities are beginning to do uh, blue economy differently, to do marine economy differently, uh, and, and to posit the argument that this represents some kind of proliferation. Uh, then maybe ask some questions as to what we can take from this. Oh, that's gone backwards. Oh, there we go. Um, so really what we're, we're talking about is an attempt to shift, shift debate about uh, things economic, e economic in, the, in the marine space from an aggregation of sets of activities uh, that might be said to be utilising or, or stewarding marine resources that take place in marine spaces. Uh, a mix of services, knowledge production, gathering, catching, farming, processing, uh, selling and regulating economy, where the regulation is part of economy. Um, this, this might be land-based, might be sea-based, might be commercial, recreational, cultural, social or economic kinds of activities. To break down those lines uh, that we saw illustrated before lunch, community versus industry, and recognise that some of those lines are a lot more blurred than what we normally talk about. And really to think about uh, the way in which uh, we can shift concerns from aggregating and measuring those kinds of things, me standing up here and telling you how much money comes from one of these sectors or another, to think about uh, the, real, the real concerns with the economy, the, uh, the environmental impacts, the, the ecological impacts, the cumulative effects of practices in, in, in ecologies, uh, questions of the community. Um, and livelihoods and future generations and so on. So to shift debate from talking about exploiting frontiers to making better futures. Some of the, 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 the ideas that we've been trying to draw on, some of the transitions thinking, it's a very interesting place to start because it, it really recognises this immediate uh, position where economy and environment are entangled. Uh, it, it tells us that we need to think about action, we need to think about doing things differently, and it points to uh, a range of engagements at different scales, different ways in which we might do things differently, and to collective action and the importance of collective action. Of course, much of the literature, however, is, is compromised because it imagines that all of this is going to flow from the top down through planning frameworks and so on, whereas the kind, the kind of thing that we're talking about and thinking about and some of our work is pointing to is the interesting bottom-up uh, initiatives that are actually out there happening in the way that people do things. Um, so our, our, our interest then is to emphasise practices, to emphasise the way that principles are put into action, to recognise different forms of expertise that are developing uh, and how we are beginning to account for and regulate um, economy. 
So I'm just going to run you through some slides, which will be probably pretty familiar. Um, the argument is not necessarily because this is said, it is necessarily done, but I think it's very important to recognize a big shift in the way that we're talking about and can making a set of commitments to doing things differently. And so this can, this can happen in, in production practices, in some of our biggest um, uh, uh, marine economy firms, some of our biggest industries. And I think it's, it's fascinating that we've got commitments here made by um, aquaculture and commitments made by Seafood New Zealand. Um, when someone says they're making a promise, I think that's a, a, a shift in uh, the way that we think about things because t possibly they might be held account accountable to that promise. There are some really interesting uh, things to think about, about where, where people are sourcing capital, uh, the number of um, ethical and social responsibility investment funds that are developing uh, and providing access for firms in these kinds of spaces to capital uh, is increasing in New Zealand and globally. Um, and then some of the responses that, that uh, some of our leading companies are making towards thinking about uh, different forms of reporting that then may, may open up uh, ethical investments, but also may represent forms of ethical investment in and of themselves. And I think that's uh, kind of important. A range of sets of commitments to sustainability. Uh, New Zealand King Salmon, for example, uh, just announced a few days ago that they're um, committed, uh, they, they're the first uh, New Zealand seafood firm or, or food firm to sign up to uh, a new set of global con commitments through their United Nations to the, the Plastics Accord. Um, and then if you, if you search the websites of, of many uh, firms, you can see a, an increasing range of um, commitments to various certification programs to uh, for, you know, friend of the sea, to in the tourism arena, to Enviro, Enviro Award Gold, and so forth. This kind of set of, of commitments that begin uh, to shift practices because they, they are auditable. A set of new, new technologies in volume production. Uh, this is in some of our biggest, uh, more kind of commodity volume driven uh, production areas with the uh, precision seafood harvesting, uh, SPAT, SPATs New Zealand, uh, and a range of kind of interventions at that kind of level uh, designed to, to make production practices more sustainable. A series of value adding strategies uh, that are emerging in, among different firms. This is Lee Fisheries and this emphasis on, on value in the product, which begins to shift us into a different form of economic practice uh, that, is, that represents a series of commitments uh, to doing economy differently. And so that, that kind of value might be added through packaging, through production logistics technologies, um, through uh, provenance claims about where the foods come from, uh, and we'll come to some of those in a second. Uh, new value opportunities, different forms of, of resource uh, mobilised, uh, uh, produced in different kinds of ways. I've just become absolutely infatuated with seaweed, which I never thought would be uh, something would be a feature of my life. Uh, but there are some interesting companies. There's Waikaitu in, in Nelson and Agrisi, uh, centred, in, centred in Pairo, I think is where the headquarters are. Um, and again, this is seaweed in Waikaitu's case taken from muscle lines. This is a, a pest that's taken out and made into a product. In, uh, in the case of um, Agrisi, the claims are and, uh, that the, the, well, there, there are commitments made to um, final based gathering of, of seaweed off beaches and so on in the, in the Gisborne area, East Coast. So again, this is doing economy differently. And then of course we have the tech science and the biotech science, um, muscle oils, muscle, um, muscle powder, uh, this magnificent fish skin uh, face where collagen, working on the properties of, of hockey and the way in which um, the collagen can be absorbed into the face at um, 
was it at, at room temperature or, or body temperature, and therefore you can have other kinds of good things attached to that collagen that goes on the face and goes into the skin and so on. But the, the, the point is the, the, um, the use of, for the attachment of investment and science into a range of products to actually develop uh, a, different, uh, a different kind of um, seafood, not seafood, um, blue economy. Uh, Māori blue economy, where the, the kind of stories, are, the provenance stories, the, the commitments to kaitiakitanga, the co commitments to different ethics of investment and different ethics of, of production are much more lived in many ways than they are in, in some, some of the other kinds of uh, examples that I've, I've shown you. But they, they do point to the, the intersection and the potential for these sorts of claims about um, intergenerational investment. Uh, and the kinds of models that lay be lie behind that, the claims to the past, the claims to the future, um, all connect, my God, it's changed colour, it's now gone into the red. I think I've still got four minutes. Um, it's the first time I've ever stood up here with something speaking at me. You've got, uh, um, but the, uh, uh, that the range of, of activities involved in that particular economy and the overlaps uh, with uh, d different sorts of levels of investment in other parts of, of the economy. It's really quite kind of fascinating. But again, doing economy differently. A series of collective projects, if you extend the notion of, of economy away from production uh, and into uh, the regulation of economy, uh, the way in which uh, communities are brought in to participate in the economy, the way in which those notions of, of community industry values are kind of broken down um, from the bottom up through various collective projects. Richard talked to you ab about these projects this morning. So uh, Te Korowai in Kaikoura is really now becoming instrumental in driving economic development projects as well as just being an economic advocate. So you've got this sort of very clearly lived um, expression of the way that community and, and industry um, come together and similar kinds of claims can be made about sea change. What we've seen in, in, in uh, talking to people in various different regions is how this notion of doing marine economy differently uh, has, is being wrapped up into regional development projects of one sort or another. And so we've got examples from Kaikoura, from Golden Bay, from Northland, uh, from Tauranga, and these kinds of uh, attempts to bring different types of economy, of, of production practice, of investment, of commitments to community together um, in the frame, sometimes with the words used, of blue economy, but certainly with that notion of a regional development project that draws on uh, commitments to community, to cooperative forms of, of regulation and engagement, doing economy differently, and commitments to sustainability. These kinds of things are emerging. And of course, they've been given uh, considerable uh, momentum by the Provincial Growth Fund. Uh, so you can see people in different parts of the, of the country coming together around these kinds of ideas now that there's money uh, to attach to them. So what is it, what is it that we, we, we need to do to make sense of this kind of proliferation? And I, I think it does tell us that blue economy experimentation is taking place. So we all go all the way back to that transitions diagram, that sense of thinking about transitions as something that's happening through experimentation rather than necessarily through top-down planning. I think um, we can talk about in the New Zealand context. It's been initiated by shifting ethics, by new science, by regulatory experimentation, brought to bear uh, through public pressure, uh, through coalitions of various forms of value, through pressure in markets, uh, consumer choice and so forth, investor ethics, uh, shifting investor ethics, and investigative science. So I think this is really kind of um, reassuring. It's being registered, we can see it registered in investment processes, in production practices, in promotional strategies, and in regulatory practices. So it's spread through all of those things that we might conceive of as economy. And if you look there at that little diagram that, that I used at the last of these Sustainable Seas conferences, thinking about economy in different kinds of ways, rather than by sector, by type and function of economy, by form of economy, you can see those kinds of initiatives in each of those kinds of forms. And I don't think we could have said this a decade ago. So that's the kind of uh, in-transitioning moment. And five final thoughts. 
I think these different types of initiative are interconnected by multiple win-wins. Uh, relations among them, I think, are what might we, we might call blue economy, if we want to define it in their term. They provide a platform for reframing visions and contests over marine resources, so we can see the contests that we come to be used to thinking about in terms of these head-to-head -head kind of contests in a consenting, uh, whoa, it's flashing now, uh, in a consenting world, um, we can re begin to receive them differently. I think we can, might be able to say that New Zealand is transitioning to a blue economy, which is, which is a big claim, uh, but one I think that we should maybe take seriously. Uh, but this must be more, however, than just claims and attractive images. But we really must, oh, it's dings. There, there really is a gritty business of commercial success. Things happen um, uh, that we needs to be negotiated. And we have to think more seriously about developing measures of impact and measures of expansion. Uh, so that, that in order to attract more investment, to appeal to investors, but also to pe appeal to regulators. Okay, so what I want to, to leave you with there is the, the idea that the treaty partnership will force us to do this. Uh, we will have to think and do economy differently, perhaps maybe even beginning by applauding new leadership rhetoric. So I want to take you all the way back to the quote at the beginning from uh, one of the proprietors of Agracy uh, to leave you with a quote, another quote from the, the Agracy at the end. When we speak of the value of seaweed, the environmental value is up, and I have been thinking about seaweed, the environmental value of seaweed is uppermost and the economic value secondary. But done right, a long-term sustainable seaweed industry for New Zealand is possible. And I think that's a really nice way to finish. Thank you.